बॉडी गोविंद मिलन की ए है तेरी बरिया गोविंद इज अ डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ अकाल पुरख वाहिगुरु ऑफ गॉड गो मींस पृथ्वी मीनिंग द होल क्रिएशन ऑफ द होल वर्ल्ड एंड बिंद मींस इट कैन मीन इदर द क्रिएटर ऑफ दैट पृथ्वी और इट कैन आल्सो मीन द वन हु सस्टेन्स दैट पृथ्वी एंड कीप्स इट गोइंग एंड श्री गुरु अर्जुन देव साहिब जी इन दैट शब्द एवरी डे थ्रू दिस शब्द दैट वी गोना ट्राई एंड कंटेम्प्लेट ऑन for the next however many minutes that what is the purpose of having this human body maharaj says pay prapat manak dehriya so if we are blessed to have this human body that must mean that we are more blessed than other life forms so what is the system that we have come through to be able to have this human body महाराज साहेब जी इम्पटा दे सवैये सिर जब रासी लख जून उपाए तजक रिजक दिया सब हूं को तद का द अकाल पुरख वाहेगुरु परमेश्वर ऑन मेकिंग दिस होल सृष्टि ऑन मेकिंग द होल यूनिवर्स हैज क्रिएटेड 84 लाख जून उपाए रिजक दिया सब हूं को तद का द दे हैव मेड 8.4 मिलियन लाइफ फॉर्म्स ऑन दिस अर्थ रिजक दिया सब हूं को तद का एंड ऑल ऑफ देम 8.4 मिलियन लाइफ फॉर्म्स देन हु सस्टेन्स देम हु अलाउस देम टू लिव फ्रॉम द मोस्ट माइन्यू ऑफ एंट्स और पार्टिकल्स थ्रू टू ह्यूमन बीइंग्स व्हाई इज इट दैट इज अलाउंग अस टू बी अलाइव फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड नाउ इफ वी जस्ट लुक टू क्रिएशन इटसेल्फ क्रिएशन हैज टू हैव अ क्रिएटर दैट इज सुप्रीम दैट इज God why is that maharaj is saying dejak diya sab hu ko tad ka the everything all of them 8.4 million life forms that are on this earth are all able to live because akal purakh wahiguru has made the srishti in such a way that every jeev is able to live now if we just look to humans if the air around us did not have the perfect balance that it has at the moment we would not be able to live if the plants did not play their part in creating the air around us we would not be able to live why is that how have we managed to get this perfect world that we're able to live in not perfect in terms of because we come one with the kala prakriti group we think on a worldly level is perfect in that every life form is able to live those that need to live in water have water and within that water all the things that they need are there for them to be able to live the air that we have around us has a perfect balance of different gases that allows us to breathe so we've come into this world and we've been through countless numbers of life forms but how important then is this manukha janam bhagat kabir ji says kabir manas janam dulamb hai hoye na bar hai bar that this human body is dulamb the lamb means that it is that it is supreme it cannot come again and again hoye na bar hai bar that we do not get this chance of being a human over and over again and then they go on to say that how the lamb is it how important is it that we make use of this manas janam that has come after so many other life forms we have been able to be born into this manas janam how important is it how special is it bhagat kabir ji in the next pankti going to say that if you take a tree as the example they give the example of a tree and a fruit falls off the tree so if you just imagine a apple tree the apple grows on that tree and then it falls off once that apple falls off the tree you cannot join it back onto the tree for the tree to sustain it so obviously as the apple is growing it is getting the nutrients from the tree is getting the water whatever else it needs to grow once that apple falls off the tree or someone pulls it off the tree no matter what you do you cannot join it back onto that tree so it can be sustained or kept alive by that tree in the same way this manas janam that we have got this human life form that we have got we have been blessed with and it doesn't come over and over again and if just like that apple we waste it whilst we are here being sustained by akal purakh wahiguru who has created this world which allows us to live and whilst it's allowing us to live if we waste that time 
that we have here, just like that fruit, that apple, falls off the tree and is not able to be sustained by that anymore, we do not know when we will be able to have this human body again. So it is very important that we make use of this body. So Maharaj in Rehra Sahib is saying, Pei prabat manuk dehriya, gobind milan ki eh teri bariya. So if we have got this human life form and we are able to meet with God, the next question arises, well, how do we meet with God? How do we become one with Akal Parakwahi Guru? Maharaj is saying, Gobind Milan ki eh teri bariya. That this is your chance to meet with Akal Parakwahi Guru. How do we do that? Maharaj then goes on to say, Avar kaaj tira kitena kaam mil saad sangat paaj kevam naam. That everything else that we do, Avar kaaj tira kitena kaam, anything that we do in this worldly sense, in terms of work, in terms of look after each other, in wasting time watching films, doing any other actions, they're not worthy. What is that worthy action? Mil saad sangat paaj kevam naam. But then we might think, well, do we stop living in the world? Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji Maharaj, on the time when they came to this earth, Akala Parakwahiguru took the form of Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji and came. At that time, there were many who understood that there was a, a need to get back to Akala Parakwahiguru. But the path that they had taken, the rasta that they had chosen, was not the correct one. And many at that time used to go and sit in the jungles for many a years and think by doing so they will be able to become one with God. Just because we detach ourselves from the world in terms of worldly sense and sit in a jungle does not mean that we have detached our mind. The purpose of a Guru Sikh or the purpose of Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji coming was to teach us how to detach our mind whilst living within the world. So Siri Guru Arjun Dev Sahib Ji is saying that the only worthy action in this world is to recite and contemplate on the name. And what name is that? They say, Mila Saad Sangat Paj Geval Naam. Geval means only, only Naam. Which Naam? That Naam is of Akal Purkawahi Guru. Now, Naam can come in many forms if you look throughout Gurbani, but if we break it down, it's quite simple. You get Gurmantar, which is Wahi Guru. Then you get Mool Mantar, and then from that you get all of Gurbani, and all of that is Naam Roop. So all of Gurbani is Naam Roop. So when we do our nit name in the morning of Panjibani, Arara Sahib and Kirtan Sola in the night and evening, that is Naam Roop. If we choose to contemplate on the name of Wahiguru itself and recite Wahiguru Mantra over and over, that is also that Naam, that Keval Naam, that Siri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji is talking about. Whether we decide to recite Jabji Sahib De Parts, whether we do Sukhmani Sahib, all of that Bani is Naam Roop. And it is by coming into the Saad Sangat that we are blessed with being able to recite that Naam. Now there's two things here that come as questions from this Pankti that we might have. First of all, where do we get that Naam from? And second of all, why is it important to come and sit in the Saad Sangat? One might think that I could sit at home and recite Naam. I could sit at home and do Simran. And it is important to do that at home, but why is it? so important to come into the Saad Sangat. If we first of all talk about where do we get that Naam from, we get that Naam from the Panj Pyare. And why do we go to the Panj Pyare? From the times of Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, when a Sikh, when a person wanted to become a Sikh, a Gur Sikh, they had to be initiated into the house of Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji. And in them times, they would take what, is, what was known as Char Naamrit, and Pai Gurdas Ji and Devara bear witness to Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji through to Siri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji how the Gurus would give Charna Amrit to Gur Sikhs and then give them the discipline that they are to follow. In the last week or so, we have celebrated the Shahidi of Siri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji Maharaj, the ninth Guru of the Sikhs, the ninth embodiment of Akal Purkh Guru. They went to Delhi and they gave their cease. You would have heard the Saki over the last few weeks, I'm sure. But on giving their cease, when their cease, their blessed head, was brought back to Siri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji at Siri Anandpur Sahib, Satguru Sahib Ji was around the age of nine years old, Siri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji. They had been told 
from Delhi before Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji gave their shahidi, a sneha was sent that the Gurta Gaddi was to be given to Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji, just like from the times of Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, the same way the Gurta Gaddi was always passed on. And it was always from Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji's time, it was Baba Buddha Sahib Ji that passed on the Gurta Gaddi. After them, it was a member of their family from their aunts bans that would give the Gurta Gaddi to the next Guru. And Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji was blessed with the Gurta Gaddi at Sri Anandpur Sahib. And when the seas of Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji came back from Delhi, Mara Sahib, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji asked the Gursikh that brought it back by Jeta Ji, that was there no Sikhs there, was there no Gursikh there that could stand up and stop this atrocity of Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji giving their seas. Now Maharaj themselves sent Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji to give their seas, but the reason for that question is for us to learn from for us to learn a lesson of what our purpose is on this earth. And Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji said, sorry, the Gursikh replied that there was no one there obvious that we could see that stood out that was a Gursikh. There may have been Gursikhs in Delhi because from the times of Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, the Guru Sahibs had gone to Delhi many a times or Gursikhs used to get sent to Delhi to do Prachar and to go to the Taram Sals, which is what they were known at the times, the Gurdara Sahibs, the place where we practice our Taram, our faith. And many times Gursikhs would go to Delhi and they would go and do Prachar there. So there were many Gursikhs that were living in Delhi. But at that time, on that day when Sri Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji gave their seas, Pai Mati Das, Pai Sati Das, Pai Dial Das, you were also Shaheed. On that day, no one came forward. Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji then said, I will create such a Khalsa that in hundreds and thousands and millions of people, one Gursikh will stand out. So coming back to the point of where do we get that name from, on that day, Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji in 1699 called all the Khalsa together. And that button that they had given after the Shahidi of Guru Tegh Bahadur Sahib Ji that we've just celebrated in these last few weeks, they said, on 16, they called everyone in 1699, they took the seas of the Panj Pyare and they made, brought them back to life. They made them Amr by giving them Amrit. Now Amrit means immortal. Mrit means death and Am means beyond death. That person that is beyond death is one who takes Amrit. So Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji gave the Panj Pyare Amrit. And on blessing them with Amrit, they gave them Naam Didat. And they gave that in two forms, one of Gurmantar and one of Moolmantar, and then gave them Gurbani. And then in At Sri Hajur Sahib, Takht Sri Hajur Sahib Nanded, they gave the Gurta Gaddi to Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji. And they told the Gursikhs the discipline of keeping the Panjikakar, the Char Bajar Kreta, and everything else. But if we concentrate on the Naam, Maharaj has told us that we are to try to get to a stage of reciting Naam 24-7. But we can only do that if we slowly build up. So we get that Naam now in this day and age by going to the Panj Pyare. And we do not have to physically give our head, but we spiritually give our head. And the Panj Pyare bless us with Amrit Didat and they bless us with Gur Mantar and Mool Mantar. On attaining that Mool Mantar and Gur Mantar, then we have to come in the Saad Sangat and recite it just like Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji has told us in the Shabbat of Asa Mahalla Panjava. They say, Mir Saad Sangat Paj Kevan Naam. Paj means Pajan Kuru, to recite that name. And how, why is it important to come into the Saad Sangat? The importance of Saad Sangat is if one was to sit at home and recite the name of a Kalapurk Vaikru over and over, they will be blessed. But in this world, in this system that a Kalapurk Vaikru has set up, they also created Maya. And the form of Maya that comes and attacks us on a daily basis are the Panj Chor. Kaam, Krodh, Lob, Mo, Ahankar. Kaam, Lust, Krodh, Anger, Lob, Greed, Mo, Attachment, and Hankar, Ego. And sitting at home, we may, these five may attack us very strongly. The purpose of coming to Saad Sangat is if at home I was sat and I did five minutes Simran, and I started to get hankar that I do so much Simran. By coming to the Sat Sangat, by coming to the Gurdara Sahib and sitting with other people, I will realize that there are many that do a lot more than me. By coming and sitting in the sanctuary of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj, they bless us 
by being in their presence. So when we are in the presence of the Guru, they are constantly blessing us. So we are sat here now in the presence of Sri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj and they are blessing us. And what do we attain through coming to the Satsangat? We start to gain those Shubh Gun, the true qualities of a Gurmukh. Now a Gurmukh is that person who has their muk, their face towards the Guru on every button that the Guru says. And when the Guru says to us that we should have Sat Santok, Daya, Taram, Tiraj, Vichar, It Adak, how do we gain them? So how do we become truthful? Now in a one-off situation, we might think, well, I told the truth, or I tried to tell the truth as much as possible. But we are not completely true. We are not true all the time. We do not always have some talk. We do not always have contentment. Sometimes we might have some talk and we might accept things and take it as they are. But we don't have that in the complete sense. So that is why it's very important to come into the Saad Sangat and recite Naam because we learn of one another and we get blessed by being the presence of Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji Maharaj. So Maharaj is saying, Pei prapt maan ku dehuriya govind milan ki ehi teri bariya avara kaaj tera ketena kaam mil saad sangat paaj keval naam And why is it also important then to go to the Panj Piyari, sorry, I forgot to say, that why is it important to get naam, that gurmantar, of the Panj Piyari? Maharaj in Sanskriti this way, he says, gurmantar hinas jo prani trigant janam pristane hai. That, that person who has not got that Gurmantar, the mantra of the Guru, that they coming on this earth may not be Safleha, will not be Safleha because they have not gone to the true Guru and given their seas and attained that Gurmantar. Now that does not mean that we cannot Japanam if we haven't taken Amrit because it is a journey and taking Amrit is not the last step. That is the first step on the path of the house of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji. So if we have taken Amrit, that does not mean that we are one, that does not mean that we are better than someone that who has not. All that means is that we are also on the path and that person who may not have taken Amrit is also on the path. But we should all aspire to take in Amrit and then once we have taken it, follow the discipline but then also just as important as following the discipline is reciting that Naam and coming to the Saad Sangha. Then Maharaj says, Sarang Jam Laag Pav Jal Taranka Janam Britha Jat Rang Mayaka Sarang Jam Laag So that is Maharaj is saying Uddam Karo So put in effort Sarang Jam Laag Pav Jal Taranka Put that effort in to come to the Saad Sangat and to recite the Naam of Akala Purkhavahi Guru And once we start to collect that Naam that is what will help us. Maharaj in Sukhmani Sahib, you all heard today, says, Jahmat pita sut meet na pai, man uha naam tere sang sahai. That at that place, at that time of death, when Jahmat, your mothers, your fathers, sut your children, meet your friends, na pai, all your, anyone that has been with you in this world, they are not able to help you at that time. The only thing that helps you is naam. And there's a Saki of a Raja at one time. There was a Raja, a king of an area who could not have children. And this Saki will tell us the importance of Nam. So this Raja could not have children. Now for a king, the most important thing for a worldly king is to have a child so they can pass on their kingdom. And this Raja, this king did not have a child. So he used to go to many a places to these different Pakhandis that we still see in this day and age that sit there with different target to eat and say if you come to us and take this or Mata take to us and we will give you a child. And he was going around and he went to some Jodhkis, Jodhshis, some Hindu Mat people who told him to do various things. He kept doing these different things but he was not getting his child. But because he was desperate he carried on going to different places. And then he went to someone who said to him if you want a child, you're going to have to sacrifice a child to gain a child. You'll have to take a life to be able to get, to be blessed with that life that you want of a child. Now this Raja, he was the king, so he could do whatever he wanted because he had the, all the local police, if you want to call it, how we'd understand it in this day and age, and everything was under him. He was the king. So to get someone and to kill them for him would not be a big problem. So what he did was he thought, let's see if there's anyone within the, my kingdom that is willing to give me their child. And he put out a notice within his kingdom and said that he would offer money because he didn't want to 
dug in and he didn't want to just forcefully take someone. He thought, let's see if anyone offers. And there was a family who were very poor and they had five sons. And they had five sons and the father of the house thought, well, I've got five children. If I give one to the Raja, I'll get enough money that for the rest of my life and the rest of the children that I've got, their lives, we will be able to live sucky, we will not have any duck, we will not have any pains of not having Maya. And this is what Maya's illusion can do to us, that we start to forget our own families when we get this Maya, this illusion of Maya that Maharaj has created, gets his grasp on us. So he then thought, I will give one of my sons, and he spoke to his wife, they said, that's fine, we will be able to get enough money to live forever. And the Raja may start to respect us, he might, you never know, in the future, if he gets his child from taking our child, he might even give me a job. And he thought all these different worldly things, and he gave his son to the Raja. Now the Raja then took this child into his palace. And when he took the child into his palace, he thought, before I kill this child, I just want to see a child play in my gardens for once. Because all his life he had not had a child play in his garden and he thought let's see what this child does. This child was very young, it was the youngest out of the five children of that person who gave their child. And this, chi this child is playing in the garden of the Raja and there was some sand, so obviously in India back in the day, there was most of the time gardens were kachinya, so it was just like mud or sand that would be there. And this child is playing with some sand, or it looks like he's playing with some sand. And when he's playing with that sand, he is building four little castles, so four little piles of sand. He is making four little piles, and then he's knocking them down and making them again. But then the Raja is noticing as he's watching him that three of the piles of sand he is constantly knocking down, and the fourth one, he never knocks it down. So there's one pile of sand that he has not knocked down once. So he's building three over and over, so there's a total of four knocking three of them down and building them three again. So again, he has four. And the Raja was sat there confused, thought this is a bit of a weird thing for a child to do, but because he had never seen a child play in his garden, obviously being a king, he hasn't got time to go out and watch children or he didn't have a child of his own. He thought, let's ask this child, what was the thinking behind making four piles of sand, knocking three down and then building them three again, and then knocking them down again. He expected the child to run around as a young child would do. The child was of an age that he was able to talk, so maybe he's about five or six years old. And the Raja, the king, goes over to the child and he asks him, What are you doing? Why are you building these piles of sand and then knocking them back down? And the child was a very learned child because he used to recite the name of a Kaal Guru. He used to contemplate on God, so he started to get knowledge of what the world really is. And this will tell us the importance of reciting Naam. So this child says to the Raja that these piles of sand are exactly like the world. One minute they're there to support you, one minute they're gone. And the Raja asked, well, explain more. And the child said, you're not going to understand because you're a king and you're in the nasha, you're in the nasha of your kingdom and you will not understand this because you are a worldly person. You do not understand the importance of spirituality. But the Raja kept asking, so the child said, I will tell you. He goes, these three piles that I keep breaking and knocking down are things in the world that people think will support them, but have left my side. They are useless to me. And the Raja said, well, explain, what are these three things? He said, the first one is my sarid. Now in this world, we have hankar, we have ego, that our sarid bought balavala, that we're very strong. And this sarir that we have got, this body that we have got, can help us all the time. And in the worldly sense, it can. Without this body, we are not able to work, we are not able to earn money. We are not even able to do seva. But when it comes down to it, how much help can this sarir give us? And the child explained that, he goes, I am a very small child. You have captured me in your palace, in your kingdom. Now look how big the walls are. On every gate, you've got a bodyguard, you've got security stood there. If I try to use my, this bala, the strength of my sarir, to get out of here, I'm not going to be able to escape, so that means I'm going to die. So that's my first asana. That's my first support, gone. Then he goes, the second one, a person has it in, his, in this world, he has his parents. And he said, a person looks to his parents and thinks they will support me. Especially if you're a young child, as you grow up, you might start to lose that asra because you think that you've got on your own two feet and you can look after yourself. But if we look at a young child, their only asra then is their parents. 
And he goes, I could look to my parents, but he goes, the problem I've got there is my parents are the ones that are given me to you in return for some money. So my parents are not going to help me. Then he goes, the third worldly thing that a person looks to, or we look to justice for, is the kingdom or the rule or the law of the time. So if it was us, for example, in this day and age, we'd look to the law around us and we think, well, they might help us in a time of need. But you are the Raja, so you're not going to help me. You're not going to let me go because the whole point of you bringing me here was so that you can kill me. So these three Asari supports that we have in this world, they've let me go down. But he goes, the fourth one is Naam, is that contemplation of God. He goes, the fourth Asara that will let, never leave my side is God. Therefore, I am not fearful of you killing me because I know that God will never leave me. And whatever happens next after I die, God will do right for me. And if we apply that to ourselves, we do have our family and ourselves and the others around us to support us and we need them in life. But if we look back to the Shabbat, what's actually going to help us? It is only Naam that is going to help us. And what does it help us to attain? Gevel Naam. If we take Gevel to mean Gevel Mukti, and it is Naam that is going to get us Gevel Mukti. Now there's five types of Mukti that people believe in within the world. And they are Salok, Sarup, Sameep, Sajuj and Gevel Mukti. Now the first four that I said, Salok, Sarup, Sameep and Sajuj Mukti are from different religions or different maths and they think that by attaining these certain places you will get what is known as Bekunt the Mukti. And Maharaj says in Gurbani that by attaining Bekunt the Mukti, what are you going to attain if you haven't got Naam? Now Bekunt the Mukti is a Mukti, is a type of liberation that you get once you are dead. And then you go to a certain place and you might, it's like going to a heaven, for example, just like other religions like promise heavens or paradises once they die. But that it does not last for eternity. So you go there for a certain amount of time and then you come back. And what is Gevel Mukti then? Gevel Mukti is to attain liberation and oneness with God whilst you are alive. Now if you meet once again with God whilst you are alive, when you die you cannot be separated because you are already one. So it is through that, only through coming to the Saad Sangat and reciting Naam that we are able to attain Gevel Mukti. So then Maharaj says, Sarang Jam Lag Pav Jal Taranka, Janam Britha Jat Rang Maya Ka. That this body, this life that we have been given, Janam Britha Jat Rang Maya Ka. That this life that we have been given is going Birtha, is being wasted. What is it being wasted in? Rang Maya Ka. Rang means colour and Maya means this illusion around us of the world. Now, what colours of Maya are we getting? Are we wasting our lives in? Again, it's that calm, grow the lobe, mohankar, anything that takes us away from contemplation of Akal Prakwahi Guru. In Gurbani, Maya is described as eating the whole world without having teeth. So Maharaj has created this world, but this Maya is taking us away from Akal Prakwahi Guru. And Sri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib Ji is saying, Uddham Karke Sarang Jam. So have that Uddham, that up and go and try hard to contemplate on the name of a Kaal Prakwahi Guru. Janam Britha Jat Rang Maya Ka Rahao. And that is the Rahao Pankti of this Shabad. Now the Rahao Pankti, Rahao means pause. It means to take a pause and contemplate on what has just been said. And it also means Takao Leon Vali Pankti. So if we contemplate and take the teaching from this one Pankti of this Shabad, we get Takao. Now what is Takao? Takao in the sim is hard to sometimes translate into English, but Takao in English, if we take to mean peace, if we contemplate and take the teaching of this Pankti or the Pankti that have come previous to this Rahao Pankti, we will get Takao within our mind. We will get peace, we will get that Takao, we will find that place of peace within ourselves. What is that place of peace that is when we become one with the Kaal Purkwahi Guru? So, Janam Ritha Jatarang Maya Ke Rahao. Then Maharaj goes on to say, in Nimrata, Japatap Sanjam Taramana Kamaya, Seva Sadhana Janya Hararaya. That on this world I have not come and we can take this. This is us doing a bainti to a Kaal Prakwahi Guru every day when we recite this. 
And when we recite this Shabbat and when we recite any Nithinim or whenever we do Simran, we should be contemplating on what does this mean to us? What does this mean to me as an individual on this journey? Because at the end of the day, to get to a Karpurk Vahiguru, one is alone. You have the Sangat to help you, but ultimately it's down to what you do. If you do not come to the Sangat, the Sangat that are sat here every day, they are on the path. If we think by sitting at home, the Sangat will help us. We have to come and sit in the Sangat. We have to recite that name ourselves. So Maharaj is saying that we should have this Nimrata, this is the Avastha that we should have, the mindset that Jap Tapa Sanja Kamaya. Now Jap means Jap. We have not recited the name of Akal Prakvahi Guru. And if we look at the word Jap or Jap, there are different types of Jap. Aam karke, normally people break job, doing a job down into four stages or four different types of job. In the, before, if we look outside of Gurbani, then we'll look at what avastha we get if we recite it within Gurbani. So you have four types of job. The first type is Bekri job. Is the job that I am, what we are doing now in a way, we are, if you talk and the sound comes out of your mouth, that is known as Bekri Bani. Or Bekri Jab. And it's the same if we are reciting Vahiguru Mantra, we are doing Bekri Jab if we are reciting it out loud. That is known as Bekri Jab. And these are steps of building up your Avastha. Now we are on this path of recite, of reaching or trying to reach with Akal Parakh Vahiguru. And that is done through, like Maharaj just, just said, coming to the Satsangat and reciting Naam. But there are different stages and we have to build through these to become that Gurmukh and attain oneness with Akal Parakh Vahiguru. So you have Bekri Jab when you recite Vahiguru out loud. And that has fall. By sitting here and reciting Vahiguru, we are getting lab. That is, we are getting the fruits for that we will get, that is getting collected. But then further to that, we have Madma Jab. And that is when we recite Vahiguru Mantra or any other part, if we say Jabji Sahib's Mool Mantra, whatever you want to take, by reciting that more and more, we are able to, what is called Madma Jab, where it's in the back of your gala here. And on reciting from there, if it was me doing it, I could hear myself saying it. If I'm saying Vahiguru, I could hear myself saying it. But the person sat next to me cannot hear it, but the sound is actually travelling out of my mouth. That is the second stage of Jab, of doing a Jab, a Jab. And the third stage is Pasanti Bani, or Pasanti Jab. And when we start to develop and we recite more and contemplate, that Naam that we are reciting starts to come within us and it starts to come from within us itself. And it starts to become a little bit more automatic. We do not have to try as hard. Our concentration starts to come together easier. And then it is Pasanti Bani. Now Pasanti Bani is Hirde De Vichon. And Hirda, if we take the literal meaning sometimes, if we take from like Sikhi to the Max and stuff, it means within your heart, but it means from within you basically. And Hirda, generally, if someone describes where the Hirda is, they will point around the heart area. But it basically means from within you, you start to do that job. So as we spend time contemplating on Akala Prakwai Guru, we go through these stages of the job. And we start to recite Gurbani from within, within us. But it's not yet constant, so it might not be 24-7. But when we sit to contemplate, our concentration comes together quicker and it starts to come from within us. And then the fourth stage is Parajab or Parabani. And that is when from our belly button, our tuni, that sound starts to travel up. So when we sit and contemplate, if we are concentrating and we're doing Mool Mantra Jab, and we close our eyes or however we sit to concentrate, the Jab itself starts to travel from your tuni. But again, it's not yet constant. This is what other people with other jobs, so in Hindu, Mata, other faiths, they start to attain these as well. Because they get different fall, because at the end of the day, they're still concentrating. Like Buddhists as well, they sit and contemplate and they go through different stages. But they're not at the stage. First of all, they won't be reciting the ultimate Naam of Akal Prakwahi Guru. So they do not get that final stage. And what is that final stage? Maharaj tells us in Gurbani, we get to that stage of Gurmukh Rom Rom Hartyava. So we become a Gurmukh. Again, Gurmukh meaning that person whose Mukh face is towards a Guru, and whatever the Guru says, they do that. And Rom Rom Hartyava. We then get to a stage where we do not have to sit to contemplate, or we do not have to try to concentrate. That Bani, that the vibrations of the name of Akal Prakvahi Guru, Rom Rom. So in every pore of our body, 
Rome does not actually mean hair, because in some of our pores of our body, we do not have hairs, because they might not grow everywhere. It actually means every pore in our body. So like we have sweat glands and different pores, every pore in our body is then reciting the name of a Kala Parakabahi Guru, and that is constant. So that is a journey that one goes through when we start on this path of bhakti and we start reciting the name of a Kala Parakabahi Guru. But Siri Guru Arjan Dev Sahib is telling us even if we are doing that, we should be on a stage of nimrata. So even if we are developing through that, Maharaj themselves are a Kala Parakabahi Guru and they're saying that they haven't done that. So who are we to say that we is Japanam? Maharaj again is saying that we need to stay in nimrata. And staying in Nimrata, Maharaj is saying Jap, and then Tap. You get different types of Tap as well. And Maharaj has blessed us very much because they have made, given us an easier form of Tap. Now if we break the Tap into diff three different types of Tap, and in this world there are three different qualities. There's Tamsi, Rajsi and Santsi. Now Tamsi Birti, or that mindset of someone who is Tamsi is someone who is in the mindset of what an animal could do as well. So they very much think animalistically. They act like an animal and what they think. And Tamsi, Tap, is when one, like you may heard or see people that do these many different things, like they might stand in cold water for days on end in the sea. And obviously seawater is very cold and it's hard for your body to take that, but they try to discipline their mind through putting their body through these different types of tap. Or they might tie their hair if they have long hair to a tree. So every time they fall asleep, they wake up again. But again, I'm gonna to get to how Maharaj has blessed us so we don't have to do any of that. But Tamsi tap is doing these different things to get different powers. And through doing these, you do attain different powers in terms of cult, cult powers. Just like the Siddhs that Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib used to meet when, especially if we look to the Bani of Siddhi Jabji Sahib and the, the conversation between Siddhi Guru Nanak Dev Sahib and the Siddhs, they started to get these cultic powers where they're able to maybe make their body look really big or go really small or they're able to disappear. Now this is done through doing different types of tap. And Maharaj is saying we've not done any of these, but we're going to get to what tap do we do as Gurmukhs. Then the second stage of tap, or the second type of tap, is Rajsi tap. Now Rajsi is like a king kind of birti. So have a mindset of a king, so everything's very luxurious. Everything you eat, everything you wear, what you own is very luxurious. That person would have a Rajsi birti. Now if you, the three birti are one person can have a bit of all of them. So you, can't, you may not only just be one, but as you develop on this path, you start to get through these and you develop up. So the lowest is Tamsi, then you get Rajsi. Now Rajsi Tap is to get your Indre Vas. So your Gyan Indre. Your Gyan Indre are the things that allow, your senses that allow knowledge to come into your brain. So that is like your eyes, your sense of seeing, hearing, touching, and the five senses, they, you get them controlled. So if you see, hear something, you might not react to it straight away because you start to control your mind a little bit more. And that is the Rajsi type of tap, and that again is done in different ways. But then what is Santsi tap? Now Santsi is to have peace, to get to that level of having peace. Now, Maharaj has blessed us so much with sad Sangat, Sat Sangat, that we skip the first two, we don't even have to do them. Now many people do Tamsi Tap for hundreds of years to try and get some kind of peace within their mind. But Siri Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji has blessed us so much that we don't have to do that. What is the Sansi Tap that we do? And this is where we start from. We already start at Sansi Tap as a Gursik. Sansi Tap for us is coming to the Saad Sangat and reciting Naam, listening to Katha Kirtan, listening to Gurbani. So basically doing what you've been doing all morning. This is a form of Tap. And it is a lot easier than standing on top of fires and standing in water for hundreds of years. But the difference is when we are sat here, are we just physically sat here or we actually is our mind sat here also? So that is where the difficulty comes for us. And that is why it's important to do job whilst we are sat here. So it helps us concentrate and contemplate. So we start to build through these different types of tab. and. Going back to these three guns, so you've got Tamsi, Rajsi and Santsi, the one who becomes one with the Kalpur Kwahi Guru becomes 
greater than all of them and gets to what's known as Jautha Pad, which is oneness with the Kala Prakavahi Guru, where these three guns do not matter anymore because they are worldly, they exist within the world and you become one with the Kala Prakavahi Guru. So coming back to the Pankti Maharaj saying Japa Tapa. So I've, we have done no Japa. We should be doing a Bainti to Maharaj. We have done no Tapa. Japa Tapa Sanjam. We have not been truthful. Sanjam means to be truthful. And that can mean in many ways, have we been truthful to what we say we are? Have we been truthful to Guru Nanak Dev Sahib Ji, Suri Guru Gobind Singh Sahib Ji? Are we truthfully on their path? Japatab Sanjam Taram Nakamaya. We have not kamad, we have not followed the Taram. What Taram is that? That is the Taram of Sikhi. And then how do we become a Tarmi person? What's the Nashaniya? And quickly I'll go over there. Aam Karke, they said to be 10 Nashaniya, 10 signs of a person who is a Tarmi. They are Khema Ahinsa, they are Mrit Sat Bachan Tapdan, Seel Saj Trisana Bin, Tarma Ling Das Jan. So what are the 10 Lings, what are the 10 uh, limbs, if you want to call it, of a Tarmi Banda? Khema. Khema is to forgive people. So no matter what someone has done to you, what bad someone may have done to you, you always forgive them, you get to this birti. And how do you get to that mindset of forgiving people? You do what Maharaj has just said before that Japa Tapa Sanjam. You do recite the name of Akal Purkwahi Guru and only then can you truly have Kima, that you have that birti to forgive people and forgive those and realize that at the end of the day, we're not here to pursue, to get, go after each other and always have a grudge. We forgive people because we get over it and you start to get that birti of a gurmukh, kima, ahinsa. Now, hinsa means to kill or to do mar on people. Ahinsa means obviously to not do that. So we get that stage of ahinsa where we do not think bad or look to do bad of anyone, whether that be animals or whether that be other creation or whether that be humans. We get this birti of ahinsa, there, kima, ahinsa, there. We start to get there, which is compassion. Kima ahinsa daya mrit. Mrit is when we speak, we have a komal bani. So when we speak, whoever we speak to, we speak sweet. We do not speak bad of others. So we do not do nindya chugli. And we do not speak bad to others or we don't speak bad about others. Mrit sat bachan. So we have that sat bachan. So everything we say is truthful. We do not lie. And what is the true sat bachan? What is that bachan? What is that? saying that we should have on our tongue at all the times, that is Sat, that is the name of Akal Parakuvahi Guru. So we start to become, and these are the signs of a Tarmi person, a person who has followed the faith. Sat Bachan Tap. So they do that Tap. What is the Tap? I've just explained. The Tap that we should be doing is coming to the Sad Sangat. We don't have to do any other form of Tap. Sat Bachan Tap and then Daan. We become a Dani. We start to give Daan to people. And there's also, if we look, we can always break these down into different categories. There's different types of dhanis. Now, dhani is someone who gives, so may give to charity. But there's four different types of them. Maharaj explains to us in Asa Divar. They say, Satya, man, satya Manasan Tok Upaja Dena Kevi Char Dede Manga Sasa Guna Sob Kresan Sar. There's four different types of dhanis, and we want to become one who is a true one that does not expect something back. Now, obviously, the true dhani, the true data, is a Kaal Parakwahi Guru, but we start to get the birti of a true Dhani. Now what is a true Dhani? Satya Manasantok Upajaya. That one who gets contentment by thinking and giving Dhan, by giving to charity or giving their time, they get some talk, they do not expect anything. Satya Manasantok Upajaya. Then there's those, when they're about to give, so whether that be their wealth or whether that be their time, they start to do vichar, should I do it or should I, after giving it, they might still do vichar that I gave however much money to that charity, but should I have given it, would it have been better off if I kept that for myself? So the third type of a dhani is that person who gives a little, but expects that expects many times over back. So if I give a little bit of money to charity or to the Gurdara Sahib, I get an ardas done. That ardas, I'm expecting hundreds of thousands of things back from Maharaj, and then I think I'm a dhani. So you give a little and you start to want a lot. Dehde sehsa mange sehsa guna sob kare sansar. Then the fourth type of dhani is that person 
who gives so the whole world does that jihadakar so they sit so they look good in the eyes of the world so you give a little bit but you want everyone to sing your praises that look at this person he's given however much to that charity you get your photos taken maybe put them in the papers look how much dana I've given these are different birthi and different mindsets of danis but a tarmi banda is get some talk from giving dan from giving dan and as gur six mara just told us we should give the swand the swand of everything we earn so 10% of what we earn but also 10% of our time is also important sometimes that we forget to give our time for a good cause so sat the bachan tap dan seal seal is kom is komal action so everything you do is komal is sweet to others seal so to you start to keep pavitrata how what is that pavitrata within our mind we start to become pavitr seal so to tresna bin and then the final stage is that we have no desire desires left tresna bin we no longer have any desires within our mind all our desires are fulfilled because the only desire we have then if we kama this tarm if we do jap and tap so the jap is reciting the name of a kal par kwahi guru and the tap is coming to the sad sangat if we do these two we will kama the tarm and we will get we will have no trisna we will have no desires the only desire will be to contemplate on that name of a kal par kwahi guru but that becomes automatic because we with maharaj is kirpa if we keep doing this we reach that stage of gurmukh rom rom harte aave so we are always contemplating on a kal par kwahi guru taram ling das jaan so these are to be recognized as the 10 nishaniya the 10 signs of a tarmi person so maharaj again coming back to this shabad that we read every day but we need to understand what maharaj is saying to us jap tap sanjam taram na kamaya seva saad na janya har raya seva saad we have not done the seva of the saad sangat we have not done the seva of the saads of those people who have sadhya ho their man, mind they have purified their mind so we have not done the seva of the saad sangat we may come but then that is the third important thing to do so we come we recite the name of a kal par kwahi guru in the gurdwara sahib we sit in the saad sangat so we've done jap we can do at home and in the gurdwara tap is sitting in saad sangat but then what is the third and most important thing that we also need to do is seva seva saad na janya har raya so we haven't done the seva of the saads of the saad sangat na janya har raya and because we have done none of that na janya har raya i have not been able to know or recognize har raya har raya is another description a name for akal prakh wahi guru and because we have not done these things we have not done jap tap we have not kamad taram we have not done the seva we have not been able to recognize akal prakh wahi guru now we may be sitting there thinking when well, i recognize akal prakh wahi guru i realize that is them that has given me this life and i myself think yeah i know about akal prakh wahi guru i'm sat here telling you that i think i know or telling you what path we should be on but what is truly knowing akal prakh wahi guru that is when we become one with akal prakh wahi guru and we start to jaan them know them in everything in the whole of existence in everything that happens and everything that we see we recognize akal prakh wahi guru hari parmatma in everything so that is the stage that we go through so going back just to wrap it up we have been given this human body this human life form but are we wasting it in maya in this illusion of the world or are we combining jap tap taram are we keeping sanjam and are we doing seva so these are things that we need to contemplate on ourselves it's not for me to tell a certain person how much they do or don't do or how much they should do this path is about contemplating on what you do and recognizing a kal par kwahi guru and as we do that we will get to a birthi that avastha that stage of recognizing a kal par kwahi guru in all and in everything and once we get to that stage we are one with a kal par kwahi guru then this manas janam that pagat kabir ji has told us is so precious is made safla hoya and we become one with the kal par kwahi guru and our purpose of coming on this earth is fulfilled so there are just some vichar that came to my mind when i thought of coming to do this talk by doing the vichar i would have made countless mistakes i myself i know we need that path but you the sad sangat can bless me so i can continue on the path of gursikhi and you the sad sangat do an ardas for me that sikhi ke sa swasana nib jave that the sikhi that maharaj has blessed us 
stays with us till the end and we are able to kamasi ki throughout our lives. That is my own irdas from the Sangat Asis Bakshini. So on sharing this vichar, I would have made main, many mistakes. If I've offended anyone, please bless me, forgive me. You the Saad Sangat Guru Roop. You are the Roop of Akal Prakwahi Guru. You are the Roop of the Guru. And Siri Guru Granth Sahib Ji themselves can also bless me and forgive me. Please do forgive me as your younger brother or child, however you see me. Deho Sajjan Asis Sariyan Jo Hovay Sahib Si Umeer Lekha Kathe Na Shootiya Khin Khin Poolan Haar Baksa Nahar Baksa Lai Naan Kapar Uttar Vahe Guru Ji Ka Khalsa Vahe Guru Ji Ki Pate Ole So Nihal Ole So Nihal